Great. Can can we all see the slides, please? Yes, yes, Vice Dean. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think, like I said, my job is very easy, uh, just to essentially run you through what the format of the thesis is. Of course, um, speak to some of the rudiments uh, of the UG thesis as required. Okay, so for all of us who are gathered here today, um, it's essentially PhDs and MPhils. And so we will be concerned with actually producing a thesis as opposed to a dissertation. And here I'm using thesis in the um, European or British sense as opposed to the American sense. Okay, so it's uh, different from a dissertation where you try to essentially apply the tools that you've learned uh, during your graduate training program. Um, because for the thesis, uh, it requires that you contribute to knowledge. And that contribution to knowledge could come in the form of um, some contribution to the theories that exist within the subject area that you are writing on. Um, it could come in the form of uh, the empirical applications uh, in the field of study, um, particularly in respect of um, the, some of the theories that exist or some of the main findings that exist and for which you believe um, data from other parts of the world or in different contexts could actually result in um, different results. Okay, but these um, um, are critical elements when you are thinking of your thesis um, to do. So um, in, in writing your thesis, uh, please be minded that you are not just reproducing what everybody else knows. Um, it is about filling that knowledge gap that you've identified through um, a review of the literature uh, pertaining to the subject area um, of your thesis. Um, so for the thesis generally for UG, um, it has um, largely five components, key components. Although there's uh, a session that precedes the main thesis um, that you will be presenting. Uh, the five components being an introductory part, um, a methods part, um, then the main results, um, summary of your findings and the conclusions that are born out of um, the findings. And um, also as part of the conclusions, some recommendation, not just for policy, but also for um, future research. And um, a session which outlines your bibliography um, that is used as part of the thesis. Okay. Um, the thesis has to be prepared in the University of Ghana format. And um, there is a general UG format and one that um, for us at the graduate school is um, it's necessary that you need to have the thesis in that format, but there are specific aspects that relate to the school or college that you are coming from. And of course, you got to also conform with the format of the school or college. Um, if there is, and usually there isn't, but if there is any conflict uh, between the two formats, that of the University of Ghana um, should prevail. Okay, but like I said, the format with respect to, um, or the format for the schools or the academic units only focus on certain aspects of the thesis and not everything. So um, the 
format of the UG thesis, um, I will discuss under three broad areas, um, the preliminary information that precedes the five sections that I have just outlined, and then the substantive section of the thesis, and then if you like the bibliography and also the appendices. Now, um, the school format usually relates to the, um, the how you design the chapter uh, or structure of this chapter, um, the format of the headings, uh, the format of figures and tables, the referencing style, whether you're using the APA, which most people do, um, the content design, um, how tables are presented or um, schools or academic units may have certain formats and uh, UG does not have a rigid um, structure or formats that it imposes on everybody um, in the University of Ghana. So in terms of the preliminary information, you first start with the title page. And the title page has um, several components that is required. And this is a UG requirement. So all theses that are being written in the University of Ghana and submitted for a degree at the University of Ghana should come in this format. Um, it should at the very top start with the um, UG, um, the institution that you're actually writing the thesis in, the University of Ghana. And of course, uh, the college in which um, your school or, or yes, your school is situated. Um, so in my case, I'm in the College of Humanities. Then you actually have the title of the thesis uh, say I have the thesis writing workshop two, and then you come to the name. So this is a thesis writing workshop two that is being written by Robert Darkwell Say. Um, I may be a pastor, a Reverend Robert Darkwell Say, uh, but you cannot use the title here on the UG page, please. So it is just your name. So Robert Dacor say, and leave the Reverend for later use. And then following that, you also have to write your ID number. Please, it is critical that you write the right or correct ID number here. Um, I, I guess I don't need to uh, tell anyone here. Then um, there is a statement of submission, which essentially is pretty standard. Um, it's pretty standard, but it doesn't mean that you've got to dub this uh, from another colleague and then leave, <laughs> do not uh, uh, reflect the uh, program that you actually um, in, okay? So in this particular example, I say it's a thesis submitted to the School of Graduate Studies in partial fulfillment of the award of degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Development Studies, okay? And I am writing this in this particular academic unit, um, the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research. And then the date of submission is say March 2020. Okay, so this is the title page uh, as part of the preliminary information that you need to have. Then you should also have a declaration uh, page and that declaration page should essentially be saying that you own the thesis. And so if any aspect of the thesis is plagiarized and it hasn't been found, uh, you are liable for that essentially, okay? So you are telling the world that the thesis is actually something that you have done yourself and it's not thesis that you've actually paid somebody to produce for you. 
Then you also should have a signature page where um, the thing will have to be signed up by you, the candidate, as well as your supervisors. In the situation where your supervisors, for whatever reason, hopefully it doesn't happen to anybody, but if for some reason a supervisor um, feels uncomfortable to sign the thesis, um, the supervisor will have to write uh, and attach a reason why they are not actually signing it. Okay, but of course, uh, you expect that your supervisor's name, signature, and date should be on the signature page. Okay, so. Um, sorry, um, I think uh, the school administrator told us that we should mute our microphone. Hello? Great. Okay. So then there is also, um, as part of the preliminary information, the abstract of the thesis that you are writing or you've written. Um, for PhDs, the abstract is um, about a thousand words maximum. Um, and so you are looking at about four pages. For the MPhil, it's about two pages. Now, usually the abstract um, is something which, if anybody takes your thesis and reads, it should give them a sense of what the work is about what methodology you have used and some of the key findings. And of course, um, that leads to some of the key policy recommendations that you've actually made in the thesis. So in a sense, in academia, you are talking of abstract as opposed to uh, the, uh, what you call the executive summary. Okay, it's just a summary of the work that somebody can very quickly read and then get the gist of what your thesis is about. Okay, so in in sense, it is what actually is selling your um, thesis. Of course, if you have a catchy um, thesis title, that is great. But even with a catchy thesis title, for somebody to be taken about and say, wow, okay, let me read this thesis. Um, if they get a sense of what it actually entails, um, that will help the person to make a decision as to whether they need to read the thesis or not. And that can be obtained from the abstract. And so it is your selling point of your thesis. And so you need to pay um, particular attention to it and spend some time thinking about how to put the entire thesis. Not a PhD thesis is about 200 to 250 uh, pages, okay? So to be able to summarize that in four pages, it means that you need to reflect and think through what you have actually done as part of your thesis and your main findings as well. Yes, yes. Okay, so also as part of the preliminary information, um, there is a dedication and acknowledgement, and the two are not necessarily the same. Of course, with the dedication, um, it is you, you may decide not to have it, um, but the acknowledgement should be uh, part of the document that you present as your thesis. Now, the dedication is essentially um, a place where you are given the opportunity to thank those that you think have made important contributions to your life. Of course, the contributions to your life will have implications for you being able to successfully complete the thesis. It is different from the acknowledgement. The acknowledgement is where you mention those who have made direct contributions and important ones are that to your research. Um, unfortunately, you find that students 
have actually fused the dedication and acknowledgement. Okay, but the acknowledgement is where you actually make a mention of those who have made important contributions to your research. Okay, and in particular, if the thesis has benefited from some collaborative project that you've done with a supervisor or a group of people, um, this is where you need to mention um, these uh, projects or people, okay? So take note of it and please, by all means, um, you can mention the pastor who has, or the imam who has been so influential in your life and uh, the football players that you, you love watching and once you watch, you become, um, uh, you get the inspiration to actually write your thesis and all that. You can do that, all of that in the dedication, under the dedication. For the acknowledgement, please, it's relating to people who have made important contributions to your research. And then you come to where um, you actually presenting the structure um, and if you like a summary information of the thesis document itself uh, from a very top level point. So your table of contents um, is essentially the pointers that people will have if they want specific aspects of your thesis. A list of tables, again, similar. So if you are looking for a table on uh, why people are poor in Ghana, it should be pointing to the page that um, whoever is looking for the information can easily find it, okay? Um, same with the list of figures and maps and then the list of abbreviations that have been used in the thesis. Now, just a footnote on the abbreviations, and one that I keep reminding uh, students is that uh, please let us stick to the standard abbreviations. In academic writing, it is improper to create abbreviations um, as you go along. Okay. okay, hello. Please, can we mute our microphones? John okay. Baptist, I'm going to I'm going to throw you out. Too. So the list of abbreviations um, should be in as much as possible. Try and then stick to the standard ones. Okay. Um, some people think it is easy to just create abbreviations as they go along, and then that becomes the norm within the thesis. But note that the more abbreviations you create the more difficult it is for people to read your work. Okay, so again, even from a purely um, self-preservation, if I could put it that to a point, um, just use um, just the standard abbreviations rather than creating uh, Robert is going. And because you are going to say Robert is going a few times, then you, you create R-I-G. Okay, and then RIG becomes an abbreviation in your thesis. Um, I don't think it is uh, uh, right, and it is certainly not appropriate in academic writing. So that is the preliminary section. When you come to the substantive section, um, it comprises the chapters and the structure of the chapters, and then, of course, the uh, reference style. Uh, typically, the APA style of referencing is what is recommended. Uh, but of course, it's not very strict. And depending on which um, school or college you are coming from, it could be different from the APA style. The size of the thesis for PhDs, you are looking at between 200 and a maximum of 240 pages. Um, and for MPhil, it's a maximum of 150 uh, pages. Of course, if you are doing um, 250 words per page, that translates for the PhD to between 50,000 to 60,000 words. And for the MPhil, about 37,500 uh, 37, words. Um, of course, the dissertations, 
in respect of the MA and the MBA, et cetera, is much uh, less. Actually, with the MBA, uh, MPA, it's uh, longest, in not dissertations. So the substantive chapters will typically include an introduction, and then you would have your intervening chapters, and then you would have the um, concluding uh, chapter. Note that with the intervening chapters, you are going to be looking at your literature review. Um, and of course, you are going to also have the methodology in that uh, section. And then you are going to have the empirical chapters which discusses the main results of the thesis and what you've actually uh, done from the empirics point of view. Now, the thesis can either be the monolithic type, like a monograph, which is just one theme which runs through it, um, but still it will have an introduction and the main um, subject that you are investigating um, as the uh, middle part of the thesis. And oh, then... you... no, and then the concluding parts, okay? But increasingly, um, people are doing the article style, although um, it needs to be uh, emphasized. And here you are looking at um, about three different, if you like, chapters that deal with um, three different objectives or sub-objectives of the thesis. Now, the important thing to note here is that the article style as um, per what Eugene allows is not the kind that is becoming popular in the Nordic countries where you can write three disjointed um, quote unquote um, articles that have been published and then put them together as um, the um, if you like the three key components of your thesis. Um, here, it has to have, um, or it must necessarily show a unification of the objectives of the thesis. Um, and indeed, what you tend to see is people having a broad objective and having some objectives that deals or all sort of dovetails into the broad objective as being the three different components of the main um, body of the, the work, okay? But also importantly, whether it's the monolithic or the article style, it has to be based on research carried out by the students while uh, a student here at the university. Okay, so guys, please uh, let's be mindful of our microphones because it's very disruptive. Okay. So even in the case of the uh, article style and where um, the aspects of the articles uh, have been published. Um, the student has to be the first author um, uh, for each of the articles that will be included as part of the thesis. Now, in terms of the bibliography, um, and note that um, what is required is bibliography and not references. The difference being that references essentially relates to um, works or research that has been cited in the work. Bibliography relates to all the documents that you've actually consulted as part of uh, your preparation for writing the thesis. So particularly in respect of the um, literature review, you find that you would read 
quite wide in terms of the array of articles, but you may be home, home, you may home in on only a few, which you then will appropriately reference. Okay, so take note of it. The bibliography will be include all of the articles that you've consulted as part of the thesis. And please, and don't um, just add sort of uh, articles because you want a long uh, list of bibliography. It's not very helpful, but also sometimes then um, uh, even uh, in your oral examination, um, uh, an examiner can ask you how a particular work relates to your thesis. Okay, so don't just go and bring a long list of articles just because you want uh, your work to meet the 200 pages. Actually, even the bibliography and appendices are not part of the pages that um, you're supposed to try and then work within if you're writing a PhD thesis or unfilled. Okay, so of course you must also um, have appendices uh, which will capture results that you think um, are not necessarily summaries or very detailed and do not need to sit in the main body of the work. You can put those in your um, appendices. Okay. So I will stop here and during the discussion time, if there are any questions that come up, uh, we can all um, discuss. Thank you very much.